when you go to church, don't be surprised if you learn something different than the person sitting next to you. Or let's say you go to a sermon or a Bible study, you know, either on a Sunday, Sunday night, or whatever day of the week that you choose to assemble yourself together to hear the Word of God. God has given every single person that calls upon the name of the Lord His Spirit. Now, the work of the Holy Spirit for those that are calling upon the name of the Lord is for salvation. That first priority that the Spirit of God has in a person is to convince and convict a person to come to the place of acknowledging their own sin for God and asking God to come into their life through Jesus his son whom he has sent to be the propitiation or to be the substitute to be the person who takes away the sins of the world who takes away the sin that the person who is not saved needs to have removed in order to hear what God would say to them personally because that's why Jesus came he came to restore a relationship that was broken he came to remove the deafness and the blindness that most people have before they get saved because they may think they know what they're doing but in reality of eternity and what God is doing they haven't a clue as to what actually is happening so the first priority of the Spirit of God to those that are calling upon the name of the Lord to be saved is for salvation to cause that person to come to a realization of what Jesus has done for them the second part of that is that once they do ask Jesus into their life, then it's not Jesus himself per se that comes into their life, but the Spirit of God comes in as a earnest, as a down payment, so to speak, as a part of God in them to begin to work inside them, to change things and rearrange things, to make them into the image of the only begotten Son of God. Because we're told in 1 John, he who has the Son has life. But he who has not the Son of God has not life. You must be born again. That which is born of the flesh is obviously flesh. But that which is born of the Spirit is spirit. And you can't see the Spirit any more than you can see which way the wind blows. And so too is everyone led by the Spirit of God. You don't know where it's coming from, and you don't know where it's going. You don't know how you got it, and you don't know how it was taken from you. So. When the Spirit of God begins to work in a person, they become born again, not of the flesh, but rather of the Spirit of God. And so the Spirit of God begins to teach them, to instruct them, to cause them to understand the Bible, the Word of God, in a way that they could not understand any other way. The only way they're able to comprehend anything in Scripture isn't with the intellect. It isn't with intelligence. It isn't with logic, and it isn't with knowledge. As a matter of fact, it's by way of inspiration that we have any intelligence or knowledge of the Word of God, because it's the inspiration or the inspiring of these written words inside of us that causes faith to grow. Faith comes by hearing, it's true, and hearing by the Word of God, but only by way of the Holy Spirit, the Spirit of God, causing inspiration to occur to the written word to become the living word inside of us so that we have the word of God in us and it richly dwells within us. You see, that's where the Jew made the mistake. The Jew thought, in reality, that if we knew the Torah, if we know the law, if we love the law, if we make the law our idol, and our God, then we have all that God said to do. And so we have no unrighteousness in us. We have created righteousness. And of the Jew, according to the Mosaic law, even Paul declared, as far as the law is concerned, I was righteous. And many Jews feel that way today. As far as the law is concerned, they have been made righteous according to the keeping of the law. But you see, something happened before any Jew could make that declaration. Jesus came and changed the law. He fulfilled it and added more to it. He gave the realization of what it was meant to do as well as how to accomplish it 
Because the law was meant to be instructions in directing us to the righteousness of God, not to be fulfilled of it, but to come into relationship with Him, not by separation of being far away as though standing at the bottom of the mountaintop and looking up, but rather going up the mountaintop and sitting with Moses and having a conversation with God. You see, if you have conversation with God, you have His righteousness, because sin cannot stand in the presence of God, for He is holy. He must be covered. And the realization is, the only way we can approach God is in the Spirit of God, or in Jesus. And that's why the blood of Jesus Christ takes away and purges all of our sins. We learn that as we study it and as we apply it. So, a lot of times people go to church and they have these wild ideas coming out of church that they run with because they heard it in church. But does that make them wrong or does it make someone else right? You see, the Spirit of God may be working on a person that's sitting next to you. They may be going through a divorce, or they may be experiencing adultery. They may be fornicating. They may be watching pornography. They may be doing all kinds of sexual sin. And so when the pastor, whoever he may be, is possibly teaching in some portion of the scriptures that he's reading from, you know, and he's talking about, well, you know, he happens to mention in passing some reference to quote unquote adultery. <gasps> All of a sudden, that's the only thing that person sitting next to you hears. Adultery. The pastor today was talking about adultery. That's what he taught. Blah, 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 blah. And you see, the Spirit of God had his way. He taught that person conviction. Because that person heard what it is the Spirit of God was saying. And that's the point that we need to come to a conclusion when we are listening to anyone share the Word of God. They aren't smart. No offense to them. They're not wise. No offense to them. For all wisdom comes from God. In reality, all knowledge comes from God. As a matter of fact, if any man lack wisdom, he can ask of God who abradeth out, but give it to all men liberally. So that person sitting right next to you in church is as smart as the pastor standing up in front of the pulpit or bima or standing on stage. Why? Because the Spirit of God can use anything and anyone at any point in time that He chooses. And so, a lot of times, He'll use pastors to teach those that really are too lazy to study on their own. Oh, did I say lazy? Ooh, forgive me. But that's the truth, because we're commanded, every single person who calls upon the name of the Lord to be saved, to study to show ourselves approved. A workman that need not be ashamed, rightly dividing the word of truth. We are all remanded and commanded by God himself to talk, walk, share, think, meditate, consider, ponder these words, the law of the Lord. Day and night, when we rise up, when we sit down, when we're walking on the way, wherever we go, whatever we do, we're supposed to be thinking of the word of God, the scriptures, the Bible itself. And when we don't, have that constant reminder we get distracted as a matter of fact sometimes we get attracted by other things we don't put the word of God into our present circumstances because after all we do that at church but we don't put the word of God as living and alive and well and in our being where we are at the moment that we're living or do we you see the fact is, whatever you've read today, you will live today. The fact is, whatever God has said today, you will fulfill today. Because today, if you hear his voice, harden not your heart, as it says in the provocation. And so, any portion of your devotional, you are living. Any portion of your reading of the word of God, you are living it out today. Don't believe me, try it. Any point in time you want to. You could do it on a Sunday. You could write down what the pastor taught. And by the end of day, if you can't figure it out, send it to me. Tell me what your day was like. I'll interpret it for you. <laughs> no problem. I've done that before with my wife and with other people. Because, you see, I have gone to the extreme of saying, Hey, God's been talking to you all along. You're just not listening. You don't get it. You don't get the point. You know, and I'll go along with your day or whatever at some point in time and say, Hey, you know, what did your Bible say today? Oh, I'm going to do it. 
Oh, you read it? Uh huh. Okay, what did it say? What we, you know. Right. Okay, so you didn't read it. And I'll convince them to read it, you know, or a devotional. And I'll say, okay, fine. Look. And especially with my wife recently, you know, I've done this a lot. You know, I said, hey, things are going wrong, right? Uh huh. Yep, sure are. You know, things are frustrating to you, aren't they? You betcha. You know, and I'll say, well, then, what did your devotional say? Because we have some favorite devotionals we read, and one of those is Streams in the Desert. She'll say, well, I don't know. You know, and she knows what's coming because she don't want to hear it. And so she'll say, I don't know. You know, kind of in that tone that every man knows, you know, and you go, okay, well, let's go look at it. And so we open it up. I'll open it up if I haven't read it, you know. And I'll say, well, I haven't read it, but let's open it up. Today, frustrations and anxieties and all those things, you know, will come upon you, but cast all your cares upon him for he cares for you. I'll slap the book shut and go. Because I know God is working on her. I know God is speaking to her. And you do too. You know God speaks to you. You obviously understand that. You know darn well that if you sat down and wrote down just whatever it was that you read, by the end of the day, if you compared it to what you went through, you know you're living out whatever it is you're reading. I even cheat. I sometimes read ahead. And I plan out my day accordingly. If it says, you know, woe unto you, you know, that you know, these things are going to happen and come upon the world, you know, blah, blah. I don't go out that day. <laughs> because, you see, Proverbs 3, 5, and 6 tells me to let the Lord lead and guide. And if I'm not paying attention, I'm liable to get into some contention with not just Christians or non-Christians, but with life itself. So, I choose really to walk in the Spirit and listen to the Lord as He speaks than to choose to walk in my own understanding and my will and not accomplish His will. So, in far sight and near sight, for me, it is so obviously easy to hear God's voice. It is so blatantly manifest that how can you not know if God is speaking to you? Because God uses the circumstances to validate what he said. God uses the circumstances and his word to validate what he's leading. God uses those things to prepare you for listening. And as you grow in those things, you begin to hear audibly his voice. Because there's coming a time when you don't have time to refer back to what you forgot to read that day. There'll be a time when you're running off and not paying much attention. And you might be heading headlong into destruction. And those are the times when God wants to speak directly to you. Because He does. He has. In my life He has, and in the life of my family He has. Each, Almost each one of my family members has heard the voice of God speak. In some way, in some time, some portion of their life, God has directly <laughs> said something bluntly and was profoundly um, challenging the person <laughs> at the time. For me, I mean, I was kind of like, uh, you know, God spoke to me. And every, actually, every time that God has spoken to me, it's never been not challenging. It's always been yeah, comforting, but challenging. I mean, and you don't feel like, you know, running away. You just feel like, wow. He knows me. <laughs> it's just unbelievable. And all I can say is when you go to a church or when you go to hear someone speak, don't be surprised if that's the voice of God being spoken through a person or through the written word of God or through the audible voices being spoken or through the music sometimes being shared or sometimes a song. But don't leave it there. You see, God doesn't speak the same way over and over again to you. He's not going to become a magpie for your entertainment where you can just go, oh, well, you know, I, I have this Bible reading plan, so I'm going to see what's going to happen, you know, next year. Uh, don't think God's going to honor your faith that way. Because, you see, He wants you to grow up into the full stature of what Jesus had and Jesus has, which is a personal intimacy with God alone. And that's what you should have if you are in church doing what church wants you to do. 
which is to respond to the Spirit of God as some guy gets up in front of you and just shoots off his mouth about what he's learned. That's basically what it boils down to. Now, you may love your pastor or minister or preacher, teacher, whatever he may be. I don't see too many teachers you know, out there nowadays because most of what people call teaching, if he's standing up there and talking and he's the only one doing the talking, that's preaching. It doesn't matter what you call it. It's still preaching. Bottom line, sorry. <laughs> just doesn't work any other way. Teaching is not the aspect of, oh, we sit still and just don't say a word. Don't ask questions. Just take it in. And that's not teaching. That's preaching, no matter how you look at it. Teaching is the aspect of learning and teaching and equipping and giving the tools in order to develop a process of instigation of the acquiring of wisdom through the application of knowledge and experience in a format that we call teaching. Oh! And the whole idea behind teaching was you had to live with the person in order to be taught. <laughs> we don't do that nowadays. We could, and in the Jesus movement, some did, but it's really not what goes on nowadays, not in church. Although some aspects of it do go on in other arenas, which is kind of nice to see. You know? So maybe your church is going a little farther down the road and become a little smarter about it than just preaching. But still, when God uses that capacity of a person to be standing up in the front, He's not the one doing the talking. He's doing the walking. But God is doing the talking. And so, you need to be acutely listening to what it is that God would say to you, not what the man would say to you. Because a lot of times nowadays, we have lots of opinions and ideas and thoughts coming from a variety of circumstances that even in a pulpit you'll hear maybe a little bit of God speak and a whole lot of man speak. And man speak is nice because it really appeals to our flesh. You know, we really get all hyped up and enthused and jazzed, you know, and it kind of makes us like pay a little more attention. But the bluntness of when God speaks is that you can't deny it. It fits you, and you know it. And that's the difference between what you should be looking for at church as opposed to what you're hearing for in church. You should be looking for God speak instead of man speak. Because I see lots of, oh, schlick pastors, and they become schlick. Most of them, maybe, went, you know, they got saved at the same time I did. They got quite a shtick going right now. You know, it's like, oh, they got this format that works out really good for them. You know, it's like they take this scripture and kind of make these personal application points, you know, and then kind of organize it in, you know, context of the scripture. Get a few scriptures here, a few references, you know, have a flip back one and have a flip forward one, you know, and then have one in between, you know. And, Kind of get these through, you know, and then like put your little notes on the side, you know, and have them all inscribed so that way, you know, you prepared yourself to share the Word of God. After all, that's what Jesus said. Shh. Don't tell anyone, but you know what Jesus said? He said, when they bring you up before magistrates and like, you know, before the people and all these other things, don't prepare ahead of time what you're going to say, but let your Father in Heaven give you the words at that moment what to say, because He'll inspire you. You know, that might be why I hear so much man-speak nowadays, because maybe a lot of people need to hear that man-speak, you know, and I see that on Facebook a lot, a lot of man-speak. You know, people will quote some cute little phrase like, God will only give you good stuff. God will never give you anything more than you can handle. God is going to give you a, a, a bountiful, money-laden, you know, roses-covered life, you know, that's just so full of joy and peace that you're just going to, like, dance into the streets of Jerusalem. Really. Man speak. Because, you see, my God tells me, deny myself, take up my cross and follow me. I don't really get where a rose and a thorn have the same place, except that one's undeveloped and one's developed, and that, yeah, I could look at my cross and be thankful for it, because I'm kind of, you know, killing off the old man and trying to live after the new man, but somehow I don't get the gist of this, you know, man-speak Christianity that some people get into. 
I'd rather hear God speak. And you know what? The beautiful part about church is I'd rather hear God speak through you than hear God speak through men of God. Because you see, men of God, I've heard over and over again. I've, I've sat under lots of great men of God. You know, and I know when God is inspiring them. And I know when man is conspiring in them. You know, and I know when it's, you know, like pre-programmed. And I know when it's like, you know, not part of the program. As a matter of fact, I even knew a pastor who used to practice, you know, when the Spirit of God was going to speak. And I thought, wow, if that's worship, I don't want any of it. No offense. Or, you know, you have your timed, certain time span of, you know, repeat three times and say this and do this and do it over again, blah, blah, blah. There's no inspiration, but there is lots of confirmation of just how much time you've got left, buddy, before you get off that stage and let me get my word out. Uh-huh. Or, we are, of course, the worship leader, so we will have the Spirit of God here. Okay. You know, just like this hummingbird that just flew by, you know. I don't think we need to be led by manspiration, but we need to be inspired by God's Spirit. Because when it's of the Lord, and it's in the Lord, then anything could happen, like the hummingbird that just flew by. Beautiful, too, with rain, you know, rain on his chest and rings. And he always comes when I'm doing the will of God. Somewhere, you know, sometimes sits out there and watches me, you know, make sure I'm doing it right. But some way God will confirm when God speaks as opposed to man speaks. Oh, you may love what the pastor said, but some things that people love leaves me dead as far as my faith is concerned or my knowledge of God. But when it comes to relationship with the Spirit of God, I am so blessed when I can rest in hearing what God would say to me today. Because that's what you want when you go to church. You want to not be blessed by being, oh, entertained by worship or we got our worship time in. That should have been taken care of before you ever went to church. You should have already had it done and over with before you got out of bed even. Oh, how can you do that? Sorry, you don't know how. Get personal with God, He'll show you. Get real and He'll let you participate in His style of worship in spirit and truth. Because spirit and truth doesn't happen inside of a sanctuary where everybody can be seen. Rather, it happens alone with God where no one else sees but your Father in Heaven. So, while corporate worship is nice, you have your reward already and you walk out fully rewarded but God wants to and desires that you should come to a place of more than just being man fed but God wants to make you spirit led that should the day come when you don't go to church you have as much blessing from him by hearing his voice as you do as if you had gone to whatever mega church or mega ministry you think you're getting so much from when the only mega there is is God and everything else is a poor sad 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 limitation of what God can do with one individual whom he could just lift up into heaven if you want to go there so that's really the question about church where do you want to have church at me? I'd rather walk away like Enoch into heaven and be alone with God than to be with the thousands on a Sunday morning and be without God. Man-led or spirit-led? Are you man-fed or God-fed? Is it man-speak or God-speak? Only the Spirit of God in you will be able to determine that. Because sometimes what might be man speak for me just might be God speak for you.